I came across a photo of this really cool looking joint a while back and I decided I'd have a crack at making it. Yesterday I got round to that, I spent a couple of hours trying to figure it out. It may look easy but it was a bit of a head scratcher but I figured it out and I thought I'd make a quick video and share it with you. I'm not exactly sure what to call the joint but it's a sliding tapered dovetail with compound angles. It's a bit of a mouthful but that's what it is. The first job is to mark out and cut the tenons in a leg piece but we actually need to make two of them and the second one will be used as a test piece. It will get sacrificed so that could be made out of any old scrap. Make a couple of marks around about quarter of an inch in and next we need to just mark where our dovetail needs to go. I quickly made this guide so I can mark a 12 degree angle. I find these pretty handy, they only take a couple of minutes to make and you'll find that you'll use them over and over again in different projects. You could use your bevel gauge as well if you prefer. And using your homemade guide again, this one is 3 degrees, so we've got 3 degrees either side of the taper and that makes a 6 degree taper. Mark it out carefully. That one isn't quite long enough but I have another one here where I can take it a bit further. The length of the dovetail tenon only needs to be as long as the thickness of the top where it's going to be fitted into. So you could uh, shape it however you want to, you could come across here. I'm going to take the taper all the way down. You could cut these by hand but it's easier on the bandsaw. And we'll just clean those faces up with a block plane. That's the leg pieces finished and that was the easy part. Now it gets a bit trickier. We have to mark out a mortise in our top piece and that's to accept the tenon. I'm going to splay the legs at 10 degrees in this direction and 10 degrees in this direction. And as we do that the 12 degree angles of the dovetail on the top completely change. And the way we'll work out those angles is we have to make a piece, a cross section of the leg that fits into this top. I've just taken this scrap of wood to the table saw and with the blade angled over 10 degrees I ripped down this one edge, flipped it over and ripped 10 degrees off that edge as well. And the reason for that is we're going to take our test piece, the sacrificial piece, and we're going to clamp that to one of the bevels. And the reason I took 10 degrees off both sides is to make it easier to clamp. I want the leg to splay 10 degrees in this direction but because I've already taken 3 degrees off the side of this leg here with the taper I've set the bevel gauge to 7 degrees. So i just set that now. So now I've got the leg going 10 degrees in this direction and 10 degrees in that direction. I've put it in the vise to make it easier to handle and now I need to put a mark across the back of the leg piece. Then take a ruler and put it flat against this top surface and against the side of the leg and we'll transfer that line across the leg. <laughs> I've just put a T on that face there and that's so I know it's the top and I don't get confused. Then taking our top piece that we're going to put the mortise in and that's because it's the right thickness we'll put this face um, down flat against the workbench and then up tight against this uh, top piece. You can see that there's a gap there, that's the 10 degree gap, so as long as that bottom face is flat on the workbench, it will be okay. And then make a mark across the back, and then we need to transfer this face here across, this plane I should say, across onto this piece, and it's a bit tricky to hold. I could probably do with an extra pair of hands, but you should be able to manage. One minute, make sure I got it. There we go, and make a mark across there. You'll probably notice that the two lines don't quite match up and that's because I took the lines from different uh, directions. But that's okay because this top line I can come slightly this side of the line and then I'll become slightly the other side of the line on the way down and that will work out. <laughs> And I'll put a B on that one for, you guessed it, bottom. Now that we've got the cross section, we can use a bevel gauge to take those angles and transfer them over onto our workpiece and mark out the mortise. 
but there is a better way and that's to make a template. This thin plastic is ideal to make a template out of. I'm going to clamp that down so it doesn't move. I want this to be pretty accurate. I'm going to use my marking knife. I should have taken notice which side that was and it's that side there. So that's the bottom. I'll mark that with a B. And also it's just these two acute angles here that we need. The ones at the back don't matter. So that was the bottom. Now I need to do one for the top. That's the hardest part done and it's pretty straightforward from now on. So we'll take our leg and put it on the side of our top piece and put it in the position we want. With the bevel gauge we'll set the angle and we want it 10 degrees but remember the 3 degree taper. So the bevel gauge is actually set at 7 degrees. So we'll hold that in position. Make a mark down that side. And then one down this side. We'll just take the end of these lines back with a square and we'll do the same on the other side. Going back to my original joint you can see that the leg sticks out from the side so now we need to determine how far. So going back to my leg that is just over 30 millimeters so I think I'll make that around about 24 millimeters something like that that sounds good to me we'll transfer that uh, measurement across the top i'm also going to make that mark right on the end and i'll show you why now with our bevel gauge set at 10 degrees the angle of our splay that mark we just made i'll draw a line down off there and now we have a reference we'll set the square for the right distance to make our mark underneath. You could do that with a marking gauge as well, but I'm happy doing it that way. With our template in place, we can make our marks, but make sure that the template is the right way around, and it's a good idea to keep that block just to be sure. If you flip that the other way, then it won't match. But that's a good thing, and that's the reason why the template's worth making, because when we do our legs down this end, they need to splay the opposite way, so we turn it round and use the opposite side. So I'll just double check on there that I've got that the right way. I'm not sure if I have actually, in a minute. There we go, that way around. So it is worth checking. And it's not much different one way to the other, but it is different, so it does matter. And then flip it around and do the underneath. And again, I'm going to check it. And then lastly, we join the bottom to the top. You should really aim for accuracy with this, but if you do get it wrong, then you can always adjust the tenon or the mortise afterwards to get a good fit. The lines on the outside aren't needed. They were just there to help lay it out. I'll use the knife to mark that back line. I should have done that earlier. And I'll do the same on the other side before I start chiseling it out. I'm only showing you in this video how to make the joint, but I will use the joint in a future project to make a video of that. The joint would be useful for furniture. It could be used on a bench, a stool, a coffee table, and it looks pretty cool. But also it could be used in something like a sawhorse where you may want to knock it down because that joint is very good and very strong without any glue in it. I had a little bit tear out in the middle but that doesn't matter because the edges are still all good so let's give it a go and see how that fits. And that is looking very good. 
That is looking very, very good. I'm happy with that. So I'll just show you better close up. I haven't made any adjustments to it whatsoever. That really did come out very well. I'll just take the corners off with the chisel. It dresses the joint up and it really does look quite nice like that. The good thing about this joint is if it doesn't fit perfect, then you can adjust it to make it fit. So if your tenon's too wide and it doesn't come all the way through, all you need to do is plane a little bit off either side of the dovetail until it does come through. So as long as you've left enough on the bottom to play with, and that's what you need to do, and uh, you can always adjust it. That may seem a bit of a procedure, but it really isn't too bad. And once you've made your templates, then it's all plain sailing from there. And they're not too difficult to make either. So hopefully that was useful to somebody. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.